Hope against hope. It's the hope you have when there is no hope. Abraham was 99 years old and Sarah was 90 when they were promised a miracle. They'd been using their bus passes for quite some time now, well into the retirement years, doing their saga holidays, and they are promised a baby boy, Isaac. As Genesis chapter 18 verse 11 put it in the old King James translation, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, uh, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Um, nonetheless, the promise came from the Lord, Sarah your wife will have a son. That's not just difficult for a woman who's 90, that is impossible. So what do you do when you're faced with the Lord's word on one hand and human impossibility on the other? Well, you hope against hope. Romans chapter 4, chapter 4 verse 18 puts it like this. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. He believed as a hope against hope in the old translation. And so he became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. What does saving faith look like? Well, Abraham's hope against hope is Paul's example. He is in the middle of a magisterial study of the gospel, is Paul, as he writes the letter to the Romans. He's showing how salvation comes not through our goodness, but from God's grace. Not through our faithfulness, but Christ's. Not through our power, but the Spirit's. Salvation is God's thing. It's not our thing. We simply receive a salvation that we could never earn. And so Paul chooses an example of faith, which is a true case of hope against hope. Abraham is completely out of the driver's seat when the Lord comes to him. Not only does Abraham not meet the Lord halfway, he can't meet him halfway. All he can do is rest in the Lord's promise and say, Amen, let it be so. This is faith. The promise of new life comes and faith says, Nothing in my circumstances and nothing in my power can make this happen. But Lord, I know you can. That's faith in the biblical sense. The promised seed is held out and faith says, I cannot produce the Messiah. Instead, indeed, I am incapable of even receiving the Messiah. Yet, Lord, you say he's given to me. So I will trust you. The context for faith is a dark and barren space. There is no possibility for life, and yet exactly there, that's where the Lord promises it. That dark and barren space might be Sarah's barren womb, or Mary's virgin womb, or Christ's virgin tomb. In all these instances, we are confronted with the deepest human weakness and the greatest divine strength. Faith here is always a hope against hope, because faith is the opposite of sight. The circumstances look hopeless, yet faith is trusting the Lord's word and not our capacities. And actually, when the despair of our earthly hopes uh, takes hold of us, that's when true hope can arise. If our hope was only as good as our resources, we would be on shaky ground indeed. Imagine a faith in human power to triumph over the dark and barren space of the tomb. No, we trust God's power to do the impossible. That is far more solid ground. We thank God that He makes our hope more certain than any earthly possibilities. He wants our faith to rest on His power and not on ours. So today, be a person of hope. Not because your sunny circumstances inspire it. Not because your sunny personality produces it. Not because your hard work can manufacture it. Hope against hope. Trusting in the God of resurrection and the Lord of the impossible. Today, hope in what Abraham held dear. God will do what God has promised. Mm -hmm.